Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to take a look at what we call type 1a supernovas and their relationship to the Hubble constant. Remember, the whole idea behind uh, the Hubble constant was that we had to find the value of that Hubble constant accurately so we can use it to find the distance to anything in the universe. And again, if we want to take a quick review here, the Hubble constant was simply a linear relationship between the recessional velocity of galaxies and the distance of those galaxies. And Hubble found that first back in the 19-teens, over 100 years ago. He figured out that relationship, and he came up with the Hubble constant, the relationship, which he called Hubble constant, but the value that he came up with was really a wrong value. And the reason, here it is, that's the value pretty well what he came up with, about 500 kilometers per second per megaparsec, which was off by a factor of 7 or 8. It's much closer today, as we know, to about 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. But it all came down to finding a way to find the distance to galaxies in an independent fashion. So one way in which we could do that is by studying type 1a supernova explosions. They last about 30 days. It's when a white dwarf star exceeds its Chandrasekhar limit, exceeds 1.4 times the mass of the sun. When it does, the star simply explodes. And when it does, it has a, magnet, a maximum brightness of minus 19. That's the absolute brightness. Now notice the explosion lasts for about 30 days. It takes several days to reach up to its maximum value. If we, if we measure it correctly and we watch it correctly, we can find out when that happens. We then, we then try to measure the apparent brightness and we, and we compare the two things. So let's say we have an apparent brightness of about plus 10. So that means we were looking at it with a telescope, we kept measuring it and measuring it. We reached its maximum value, we tried to measure the brightness of that galaxy. We then know, of course, that the absolute brightness, the real brightness, is minus 19. And then, of course, we simply take the difference. So what that means is that if the actual explosion happened at a distance of 10 parsec, it would have a brightness of minus 19. But instead, when we measure it, since it's so far away, it only had a brightness of plus 10. That's a difference of, let's see here, delta M. So the delta M here would be about 29. So then to find the difference in intensity, we take 2.512 raise it to the 29 power, so this is equal to 2.512 raised to the 29 power, and when we do that, let's see what we get. So 2.512 raised, oop, 2, 2.512 raised to the 29 power, and we get uh, 3.99 times 10 to the 11th. It's a big number. All right, so that would be the difference in intensity, the difference in luminosity to where it's actually occurring to, to where what, what it would be if it was only 10 parsecs away. So therefore, to find out where it actually occurred, the distance, we take the distance 10 parsec and multiply it times the square root of the difference in intensity. Because remember, the intensity is proportional to 1 over the distance squared. So therefore, the distance to the galaxy, which is where the type 1a supernova explode, is uh, occurred is 10 parsecs times the square root of 3.99 times 10 to the 11th. So let's take the square root of that. So that gives us d equals 10 parsecs times 6.31 times 10 to the 5th. That's 631,000 times 10. So that means that d equals about 6.31 megaparsecs which is about 20 million light years, 20 mega light years. So that's how we do that. We find a galaxy, we observe a supernova explosion, we then measure the recessional velocity, then we find its actual distance, and then we use that as a dot on the plot right there. So we measure the recessional velocity, we measure the distance using this technique, and then we get a dot on the curve like that. And so we find more dots, and then we connect it with a straight line. We do exactly the same as what Hubble did. Instead, this time, we use the supernova explosions to find the distance to these galaxies. And when we use that technique, we found that Hubble constant was equal to somewhere between 40 to 65 kilometers per second per megaparsec, which was actually at the low end of a lot of other attempts that we had to find the, distance, to find the Hubble constant. If that was a true value, that would mean that the universe was more like about 20 billion years old. And for a while, that was the accepted value of the age of the universe, that it was closer to 20 billion, rather to what we now know is close to 14 billion years, or slightly less than 14 billion years. 
So again, it was a very good method. We still use this method today, but today we can find more refined values for these measurements and therefore our current value for the Hubble constant based upon this method is coming much closer to the value 65 rather than the range of 40 to 65. So again, these techniques are all good techniques, but it took decades and decades of hard work and, and hard science to try and come up with that exact value of Hubble constant. So another way to relate Hubble constant to distances of galaxies using the type 1a supernovas.